My message is entitled, Never Look Back. My name is Ruth. For those of you that know who I am, and some of you may and some of you may not, um, I'll explain a little bit of my life to you. There's a book in the Bible, and it has about four chapters, and it's named after me. This book is mostly written to, to not give honor to me because there's really not much to give honor to me about, but to really give honor to the lineage of Jesus. I'm part of that lineage. I don't know why I'm not one important. I was a Moabite woman. And this story I'm going to tell you is not only going to explain my struggles as a woman, but a person who overcame life's obstacles. I will tell the story of my life. I will tell you about the sovereign work of God, his grace, his, his abiding love, and who he is in my life. Let me explain to you who I am. I am a Moabite woman, and my people were not good, godly people. We didn't worship the same God that most people read in a Christian Bible would worship, but we worship two gods. We worship one called Melech and one called Commotion. One of the things that we did is we participated in human sacrifice. So it wasn't like we served a loving God. So to come and be a part of, of, of such a place where I'm at now is not where I came from because we our, our gods were shaped like calves and, and had the face of a calf and, and arms like humans, but, but they were just idols. They were just things that were presented to us that we went to worship and, and we gave sacrifice to. They weren't loyal gods. They weren't loving gods. They weren't someone who, who would reach out and, and touch our lives, but they were people that weren't even real. So let me start with my problems in life because the first of my life, it begins with big problems because there was famine in the land. There was death in the land, and then I had to leave my own country to go to a new country, but I'll get there in just a minute. But I'm a student of the word. I'm a student of who Jesus is and who, I, before I even knew Jesus, because Jesus wasn't here yet, who I knew God was. But I was a student learning just from the people that I was around. He showed up for the people who loved him. So let's start with the famine. There was a horrible famine in the land. This was the fourth famine for the children of Israel. Famines came about in the land as a sign of judgment from God for the disobedience of the people. At this time, there were no kings, and a judge was appointed as a righteous person, and he was the one that was trying to get the land back in order. So there was chaos in the land because all the people were being disobedient to God. You would think that being the fourth famine that they might have learned by now <clears throat> that maybe, just maybe, they shouldn't disobey God. So this family just all of a sudden decided to pack up and move from Bethlehem, Judah, to, to where I am from, to Moab. So here comes this new family, and, and I got to meet them because soon I'm going to become a part of this family, and, and I'm going to start talking about my family. My father-in-law was a Limelech. His name means God is king. My mother-in-law, her name is Naomi. Her name means something also. Everyone's name means something for some reason, even though I never knew this before. And her name means my pleasant one. When I met them, I learned that they had a relationship with a different God than what I was taught. A real God. They said he was a living God. These are people that lived in a time of great disobedience to God and they moved to a different country and they had two sons, one of whom I married. One who another one of my friends that I grew up with married. Unfortunately, this is where my tragedy begins. Both of the sons had died. First, their father died, so that was a tragedy all in itself. But then all of a sudden, my husband died, and, and my sister-in-law, her husband died. And it left us with nothing. None of us have children. Naomi doesn't have any more children. She just has us, and all of a sudden, the children aren't here anymore, and we have no children of our own. But let me tell you a little bit about my mother-in-law so you can understand, because this is how I learned about who God was. This is how I learned whether I wanted to serve God. See, there was a famine in the land of Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem, Judah means the house of bread or provision. So because of the disobedience of the land, there was a famine in the house of their provision. 
This, I learned, is what they believe happens when you violate God's principles. You have a famine in your life. They packed up and moved to Moab, a place which represents the flesh, because it was created when Lot's eldest daughter felt as if God had left them to be the only ones left on earth. So, so they got their father drunk and had sex with him, and that's how Moab came about, and that's how my people came about. So that's where I come from. But let me go back to Naomi. She had a husband, and he died. She had two sons, and they married us, and then they died. All of her provision was gone. I think back, and I wonder now, why did they move here? Why didn't they just repent? Why didn't they just ask God? And Because, see, I'm thinking of what Moab means and, and where it comes from. And I'm thinking that, that when you sow to the flesh, you reap death. But that's just my opinion. My mother-in-law had heard that God had shown up for her people and brought forth provision for them at the time of harvest. So she went out and she wanted us to go back and she said, let's pack up and leave. And then right when we were leaving, she changed her mind. She said, you know what? I don't want you to go. Stay here. And we all, we're all women. Okay, we're very emotional, so we all start crying. And we cried, they cried, everyone cried. Probably our neighbors cried. <laughs> and we go back and she says, I don't want you to go. So we're like, no, 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 we're going to go with you. Being the faithful, dedicated children that we are. She said, no, 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 I don't want you to go. And we all cried, and I didn't understand why she would say that, because she said, listen, can I have another son? Can I bear another son out of my womb? Can I give you something? Even if I had a son now, would you wait on him to have more children? I didn't understand what she was talking about, so I just kept going and, and said, no, I'm going with you. But, but my sister-in-law, she, she changed her mind pretty quick. I didn't understand because every name has a meaning and, and her name means to turn one's back. Because all of a sudden my sister-in-law decided to go back to our people and go back to the things and go back to the things that, that we could have had or that we had before to our false gods, to the things. But see, I couldn't go back. And this is why I couldn't go back because something happens when you get around children of God. Even when they're in disobedient, if they, if they teach you their ways and they teach you things about God, there's something that happens that, that, that rubs off on you, that changes you. There was something on the inside of me that, that when she told me to go back, I said, I can't go back. If your people will be my people and your God will be my God, I can't go back. There was something that changed on the inside of me because when they prayed at night and my husband, before he died, and, and, and see, when you're around people, they begin to pray and they do things out of their customs and their traditions. So their traditions became my traditions. And, and how could I pray to a God that, that seems so loving and so kind now and then all of a sudden go back to one that, that kills people? That's an idol that's slain. When they told me there was a living God, so I don't understand their traditions. I don't understand. I'm just learning. But something had changed on the inside of me. I wasn't going back to find provision because even though I knew that Bethlehem was the, um, the house of provision, it was the house of bread, and I had heard and we had heard even where we lived that God had started providing again, that's not why I was going back. I didn't. God had never provided for me like that. I had never seen that in my life. We're here. I could go back to my family, and my family will take care of me because we're not like them. We don't have all these laws and all these customs. But Orpha went back. She was half committed. She turned back to her old ways. I don't understand why, but she went back. I looked at my mother-in-law and I realized that she was willing to forsake her life to go back to this place, to this place where God had provided, to this place where, where even if she didn't know whether God was going to ever provide or not, she believed in him. She had faith in something. She believed in something. She had made a choice to leave the flesh is what, what I learned later was what it's called because, because this is where our people come from because they didn't 
mistrust God. Our people, when, when Moab was born, it was because there was a mistrust in God. We didn't trust him anymore. So the lack of faith, so I know now that, that the faith that you trust in God, that he will provide. So I wanted to go back and, and I wanted to understand and I went with her. And this is what I learned when I went. There's a lot more to my story, but this is what I learned that was most important when I went back with her to Bethlehem, Judah. You can't go to a place that God's called provision and not expect God to provide for you. If you leave God's provision, if you leave his ways and you leave exactly what he wants for your life and you step out of covenant with God because you think there's a better way, just like my sister-in-law did. See, she was half committed to the call. She was half committed to God because as soon as something greater came up, she ran back to her old ways. But if you fully commit yourself to God, and you fully commit yourself to the ways of God. Because I'm just learning who God is. I'm just learning who he is in my life. If you fully commit yourself, you'll understand that he is loyal and he is faithful. That his providence will get us through. That he will direct us in every way. He will, he will carry us and he will provide. When we went back, God brought more provision to our house than what we ever had. My mother-in-law, whom I told you about, her name is Naomi. See, when we first left, she changed her name to Mara. She said, because God has forsaken me, and, and I, I will become bitter because of this. Call me bitter. But you know what happened is when we went back, God blessed us in such a way, because we sought him, because we loved him, that we can call her Naomi again. That he gave me a son that I could, that I could name and, and hold. And he gave me grain enough to feed not just myself, but to take care of my mother-in-law. He gave a continuing heir to her when she thought that it, all hope was gone and everything was gone. When you choose to serve God and never look back, that's what happens. God continues and he will help you to continue on your journey with grace, with love, with mercy, and compassion. Amen. Amen. John, Heather. Okay, so feedback for Heather. <coughs> great. Great. Anything specific that made that? Just like the emotion in your voice, as well as like Olivia, was really like the for me. Just like speaking in the first person and just being honest now wouldn't have done it. But like really making yourself that character was like crucial. I'm sorry. Kind of piggybacking off of Danielle. In the beginning, you know, you present Ruth as a very meek, very mild, and, and I almost feel like Ruth is just a very humble spirit, selfless through and through. And it was quite evident, but then, you know, you started getting passionate, started, started preaching. But you were still the character of Ruth. And I I liked how that kind of became like the applicational term. And so you were still in character, but you, you were presenting for um, your service as well. Clear. Well, good vocal variety too. But, you know, like you said, Danielle said, it was, it was no monotone. It was just up and down. And it made sense in context. Suggestions? Be careful not to put your hands in your pockets and kind of like pull on your clothes. That can be distracting sometimes. Yeah, I'll show them a few. <laughs>